In the heavily populated state of Rajasthan, scarcely 176 kilometers from Delhi and 50 from Agra and its famous Taj Mahal, a small national park covering only 29 square kilometers is the destination of thousands of birds arriving from different countries of the eastern Palearctic region. In the midst of a region replete with tourist attractions of historical and cultural interest, the Geoladeo Ghana National Park goes unnoticed, and yet it is an oasis for many bird species in danger of becoming extinct. Despite its reduced size, Geoladeo Ghana is one of the most important wetlands on the Asian continent, a goal for ornithologists from all over the world to see some of the rarest and scarcest birds on Earth. What began as a hunting ground for aquatic birds has today become a bird sanctuary as a result of hunting interest and the enterprising initiative of a former Maharaja. Sunrise in Keoladeo. This year the monsoon rains have been very scarce, and in the month of March the breeding colonies of painted storks are empty. Everything at the small national park revolves around water. A slight disturbance in the annual rainfall cycle can alter the population of different species of aquatic birds, their egg laying or the time they spend in the park before migrating. But water is also the greatness of Keoladeo because although its level varies depending on rainfall, there is a year-round minimum surplus which is used by half a million birds pertaining to more than 350 different species. A third of the birds at Kirladeo are migratory and spend the winter here before returning to their breeding grounds which may be as far away as Siberia or Central Asia, while 120 other species come to the park to lay their eggs. Some pause here in their long migratory trip to get their strength back and many others are residents. So all year long, Kirladeo Ghana is an ornithological show. The aquatic ecosystem is very rich in flora and fauna which nourish the majority of the park's birds. The lakes contain a wide variety of algae and aquatic plants, and there are more than 20 fish species. There are frogs, insects, mollusks and plankton, a nutritional combination for the birds which consume an incredible amount of food each day. For example, in the 30 or 40 days during which painted storks hatch their eggs, it is estimated that they consume at least 1,200 tons of food, and that's only the painted storks. Many of the species at Keoladeo, or Badapur as the park is also known, have specialized feeding habits which makes it possible for so many different species to cohabit in such a small area. Jacanas, like this pheasant-tailed one, have become specialized in walking on the vegetation, floating on the water, to find the larvae and mollusks they feed on between the reed beds, water lilies and giant reeds. Eight different types of heron and egret can be found in the national park. 
All of them have become specialized in fishing using their bills as harpoons. Their long wading legs help them to move through the shallow lakes. Their camouflage and patience do the rest. The imperial heron did not have luck this time. Among birds of the Ardeidae family, which includes heron, egrets, nocturnal and noble herons and bitterns, patience is an indispensable factor for obtaining food. Armed with sharp vision and strong pointy bills, their fishing methods are based on waiting for the fish to get within the range of their bills and then to hurl their necks forward, harpooning their prey. The paddy bird, a crab hunting egret common to India, uses an innovative method. It makes short flights very close to the water until it sees the fish moving. It then lands on the water, turning about in the air and launching its well aimed harpoon in the direction in which its prey is swimming. In the Jils, or flooded lakes, there are other fishing birds that use their bills as harpoons. But unlike the heron, they prefer underwater fishing. Like their relative, the cormorant, the darter do not have waterproof plumage, and they must dry themselves in the sun after one or two immersions in search of fish. They swim under the water with only their long-shaped necks above the surface, which is why they are commonly known as snake birds. Here is yet another harpooner and another harpooning style. The spotted kingfisher prefers to hover above the water and fall like a dart onto its prey once located. Each species eats different types of fish depending on their size and position in the water. The kingfishers catch their fish near the surface, while the darters, for example, capture larger fish closer to the bottom. Spoonbills are residents of the park, that is, they live in the Keolodeo all year round. Cormorants, darters, jacanas, heron and egrets, and the coots and aquatic rails also remain in the park so that the hunting fowl and scavengers have food to live on 12 months out of the year. The cleaning of cadavers is extremely important. The water at Keoladeo is pooled and decomposing bodies can alter the quality of the water, particularly in the summer months. Keoladeo is the name of an old Hindu temple dedicated to the god Shiva, which can still be visited inside the park. A thick forest formerly covered the vicinity of this small temple and in local language, jungle is called Ngana. When the park was created, the area was known as Ambaraptpur, but in honor of the temple and the surrounding forest, it was renamed Kiladeo Ngana. What is now a national park owes its existence to the Maharaja Kishan Singh and his love of hunting. At the beginning, this area was no different from the surrounding forests of undergrowth, but there was a slight inclination where the water collected during the rainy season. The water attracted the birds until it dried up, 
and the Maharaja, who loved to hunt them, decided to add water from a nearby irrigation channel to the depression and build a system of canals and floodgates to control the flow and continuance of the water. The use of floodgates managed to keep the depression flooded year-round. The aquatic fauna and vegetation prospered and the fowl came by the thousands and stayed all year long. To celebrate the success of his initiative, the Maharaja organized extravagant hunting parties attended by British dignitaries and Indian princes. The Bharatpur hunting excursions became famous among the Indian aristocracy of the beginning of the century. As some inscriptions carved in stone inside the park remind us, the killings were atrocious. The sorrowful record was won by Lord Linlithgow on the 12th of November 1938, when, heading a group of 39 hunters, they killed 4,273 birds in just one day. Today, the largest hunting ground of waterfowl in India has been converted into a sanctuary for their protection. The hunting parties for the privileged continued until 1964, and the Maharaja retained his personal hunting rights until 1972. Since then, no hunter has shot any bird in Keoladeo, Ghana. Among the park's birds, there are certain ones, such as these cotton teals, the smallest ducks in the world, which stand out due to their uniqueness. Among these, perhaps the most admired and scarcest of all, is the Siberian crane. There may be no more than 400 or 500 pairs of Siberian cranes in the world. They arrive at Barhatpur from the cold tundra of northern Asia, where they have their breeding grounds. The scientists at Keladeo study their migrations with radio transmitters attached to their legs. But it appears that the former migratory cycle of these birds is coming to an end. Pressure from man has reduced their numbers and currently only two or three Siberian cranes come to Keladeo. The Saras cranes, on the other hand, are numerous and live at the park year-round. They are one of the birds most respected and loved by Hindus, who take them as an example of marital fidelity. When Saras cranes find their partners, they do not separate from them, and if one of them dies, the other remains unpaired for the rest of its life. There are also different mammal species in the park which are eclipsed by the number and variety of the birds. Shallow swamps are dotted with islands, elevated land where Nilgais, Chitals and Samba deer find refuge. Surrounded by water and abundant herbaceous vegetation, they are safe vantage points where the animals can feed while watching for the arrival of predators. Like the flooded areas, the park's dry land is used by different groups of animals to feed, take refuge raise their young, or just recharge their batteries. 
like this soft-shell turtle is doing. The characteristics of Kiroladeo make it a paradise for amphibians and reptiles. There is humidity, a hot climate which can reach 47 degrees centigrade, and numerous prey for feeding. In the water, the soft-shelled turtle is the maximum predator among the reptiles, where it hunts different small-sized birds. But on land, the Indian python is the leader. Indian pythons are usually not more than six meters long. While in many areas of the country they have become extinct locally, in Keoladeo they are frequently seen in the area near the temple. While their appearance is impressive, pythons are timid animals in man's presence. Visitors to the park must be cautious when entering the area where they live in order to see them before they flee and hide in the dens they have dug in the ground or in holes in dried out logs. In the area surrounding the park, human pressure has done away with the green areas and their wild animals. Many predators have been exterminated, and only an occasional leopard can still be found on the preserve. But with man's arrival to Keoladeo, a new hunter has appeared. A hunter which, like its wild cousins, hunts in groups. Some of the dogs in bordering communities have become wild and hunt inside the national park. They look for sick or young animals which cannot flee due to the water surrounding the elevated areas. And they are terribly effective. The dominant pair begins to devour the young chital. The third dog, occupying a lower rank within the group, helped in the hunt, but is not allowed to taste the catch until the dominant members have had their fill. Like their cousins, the Kuanis, the wild dogs of India, they have a very strong social structure which allows them to have a very high percentage of success in their hunting endeavors. But for those of lower rank, it is a frustrating situation, and they react by scaring deer, the only ones who will eat after them. The dogs remain permanently alert. The presence of wild dogs in Keoladeo is a threat to wild animals and the guards pursue them implacably. Since this is open flat land, their hunting is usually seen by visitors who immediately notify the guards. The more experienced dominant dogs know this and they will flee, but the hungry helpers can do nothing more than wait for the moment when their appetite will be satiated.
When the two leaders leave the cadaver and prudently begin to withdraw, the unhappy helper sees that its time has come and does not realize that time is running out. The Keoladeo Ghana National Park is visited each year by thousands of nature lovers and especially bird lovers. Tourism provides income which is used to maintain the preserve. Thus, visitors guarantee its continuation. But it hasn't always been this way. When hunting was banned, the viceroys and maharajas were replaced by tourists who were disrespectful of the environment and the domestic livestock of the inhabitants of neighboring villages. To prevent this lamentable situation, in 1981, Barhaptpur was given the rank of a national park, at which time it was named Keola de Ogana. Since then, tourists, and particularly local ones, have become much more aware of the need to take care of this small natural gem. Keoladeo Ghana is a minuscule drop of greenness in an overpopulated state. Most of the parks in India were the hunting grounds of princes and maharajas, but Keoladeo is the only one in which the habitat was created by a maharaja himself. This makes the park extremely dependent on man's provision and control of the water, i.e it makes it extremely vulnerable. But despite its artificiality, its vulnerable dependence and its small size, millions of birds from Europe and Asia need it for their migration. For local dwellers, the fertility and richness of Keladeo is the work of Shiva, the god to whom the temple is dedicated and after which the park is named. Keladeo Ghana really does seem to be a miracle. are fed by rainwater and by the water brought in by canal from the Gambir and Banganga rivers. There are no natural springs. The actions of Kishan Singh, the Maharaja of Bharatpur, did the rest, demonstrating to what point the actions of man, which generally destroy the environment, can fortify it and cause the life inside it to multiply.